Oh, and any questions I'll put on the thing. Okay, this is real life. So, hey everyone, it's almost Friday. Yay! Um, I upset my nail lady today. I called to make an appointment for Saturday and she was like, oh, tomorrow? And I was like, no, tomorrow's Friday. And she was like, nah, today's Friday. I was like, I'm so sorry I bursted your bubble. Today is Thursday. Yeah. Tomorrow's Friday. And I was like, and I need one Saturday. She was like, oh man, <laughs> yep. Um, so random. I'm already off on a tangent, but um, I'm Rachel. Uh, I'm one half of yours truly. My other half is at work. And this is Lisa Suzanne. Hi, everyone. Yay. Okay. Um, she is super excited to have you. Um, she is part of the Do Not Disturb book club, who has a speed dating with a book event going on right now. My husband just shut the door and it made a funny noise. Um, and then he pulled a face. It was funny. But um, yeah, they have a an event going on right now, Speed Dating with a Book. So 16 freebies right now, which as a book nerd, I was super excited for. Um, and then Lisa, that's Lisa's free book. Hey, Karen. And um, she actually has a new release as well. I do. That is... That's so pretty. I saw it on Amazon. I was telling her um, before we came on. Yes. So um, I looked at your Amazon before we started and Take My Heart, which is your um, Do Not Disturb freebie, is number one in comedy right now and number one in rock music. 44 Yay. overall in the free Kindle store. And you were telling me your new release is number one as well in what? Uh, number one new release in rock music. Yeah, she is, she is killing it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, so excited for you. This is um, when I originally heard about this event, I was excited like because I'm a reader and a pretty uh, proficient one. <laughs> I read a lot of books, so I was like, oh yeah, loading the Kindle up. Yeah, my husband I, is currently I on vacation. <laughs> yeah, my husband's on vacation, so I was like, that's even better. He can like deal with all the tiny, you know, the tiny humans and the animal and the the rest of the stuff. And I'll just read. Perfect. Yeah, I like it. And Ryan sounds like a perfect vacation. But not maybe a perfect vacation for him, but I mean for me, I'm, I'm in. Um so tell me a little bit about your books, whichever one you want to start with. Well, I have 28 books. This this one that I just published last Monday is my 28th book. So I have a little bit of everything, but my more recently I've been doing rock star romances and that's kind of what I'm known for, I guess. And um, the ones behind me, I don't know if you can see me that way. those are my original covers. Um, hi, Karen. Uh, <laughs> but this is, this is the new cover of A Little Like Destiny. And this was kind of uh, the first rock star romance that um, really took off for me. And so I kind of call it like my breakout book, I guess. And um, it's free right. This one's free right now too. So that's why I have awesome. it over here. Um, a little like destiny and it's a trilogy. Um, and it's about this English teacher. Cause I used to teach English. So she uh, goes to a concert, her favorite band and ends up hooking up with the lead singer um, and then leaves in the morning. Cause she's so embarrassed. This is so out of character for her. She doesn't know what to do. So she just leaves. Um, runs into this hot guy on the elevator on her way out of the building and then ends up dating this new hot guy because obviously the rock star is like, he's the bad boy. He doesn't settle down with women. Like this is not his thing. So she starts dating this guy and he um, wants to introduce her to his brother who happens to be the rock star that she had the little fling with. So um, that's all I'm going to tell you about it. But <laughs> it's um, one epic of already. Yeah. So that one pick that one up. Um, so that's a little like destiny. And then I'll tell you about my free one, take my heart. Oh, let me back up a second. So this one, um, the band that he's the lead singer for is called Bail. And so eventually we learn more, a lot more about his band Bail. And then this is, um, he's from a band called MFB, which stands for my favorite band. And I don't know if you can see my shirt. I see, yeah. I don't know today. <laughs> and so this is uh, the first book in a series of standalones. Um, so they could all be read on their own. But this is the first one that starts 
the stories of all the guys in MSB. And his name is Dax. And he, um, his manager talks him into going on to a reality show to find love. But really, he's only going, he doesn't want to find love. Are you kidding? He's a rock star. Um, so he wants to uh, get exposure for his band because this is going to be a huge reality show. Um, but there's some, just a lot of shenanigans. And then, you know, there's the one girl who's kind of off limits who he can't stop thinking about. And you'll have to read it. What happened? Hey. So those are my two freebies right now. So grab those because it's only free for a few more days. Awesome. Yeah, I'll have to grab those. They both sound um, intriguing. And it's been a while since I've read a, a rock star romance. So, yeah. And I, I get on like full tangent for, oh, for like, books. So. Yeah. 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 So maybe rock star is my next one. Maybe I need to revisit yeah. that one. <laughs> it might always have some other trope mixed in too. So, you know, if okay. rock stars aren't your thing, then kind of picture him as a billionaire or whatever, whatever is your thing, you know. A firefighter. You can't really do that. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So, but he can be a, a bad boy, which is right. a type, right? Or yeah. he could be like the sensitive guy. We, I mean, I say we like I have a mouse in my pocket, but we as readers, I think, can can do that. I am totally. Yeah. Just like if you can't pronounce a name, you just make up however you think it's right. <laughs> I'm from Texas, so some of those names, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna butcher that one. Like if I was to try to pronounce that, I'm going to butcher it. Um, so I generally will just, or I'll go just by the first name, like the first letter. So in yeah. my head, it's like, oh, okay, his name is G. We're good. Right, G. Okay. Whatever, yeah, G. There, yeah. That's where we're going. <laughs> that's what I tell my kids too. My, um, my kids are uh, 11 and almost 13. And so they're becoming readers where they're finding the, things that they like to read uh, yeah. my daughter will get caught up on names and she's like what does this say and i'm like it's a name just pronounce it however you want it doesn't i mean google the it. person might care i mean the person might care but yeah. you know i bet your name's regularly in your, yeah. your head and I, do, I have a really dumb funny story about this too so i was i think it was like second or third grade you know when you're just starting to read and i totally remember this and it was a long time ago um, but I was reading a book to my mom and I kept reading the woman's name as Glade and she started laughing and I was like, I don't know how to say that name. And she said it was Gladys. So I was calling Gladys Glade. I, hey, hey, you were, you were pronouncing most of the consonants and why are confusing in names sometimes anyway, because they're in weird spots. So, um, yeah, it's like, funny because girl. I have a really easy first name and I grew up with a very hard maiden name and then I married a hard name and so when people butcher my last name I'm used to it but um I've, I've gotten a couple of times like Raquel and I'm like Rachel? I get it. With, so, <laughs> Suzanne is my first and middle name I was I used to teach high school so I kind of dropped my last name when I first started publishing and I get Liza all the time people always call me Liza and I think because it's me and Suzanne, just so maybe, maybe they're like superimposing them. But yeah, yeah. And I cannot make fun of people for getting names wrong names because I am the worst with names. If Dawn hops on here, she will let you know I am terrible with names. I don't even get close. Like somebody's name can be like Bridget, and I'll be like, "Did you see Denise emailed us?" And she's like, "Ooh," <laughs> I'm like. I did, there's an email in the thing for you. And she's like, Rachel, you weren't even, you weren't even in the same part of the alphabet, my friend. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm terrible with names. It is terrible. I could not be a teacher. I would be like, hey, you. <laughs> you with the brown shirt. Yeah. I can't even imagine what teachers are doing now, like going through right now. And I have a bunch of friends who are still teachers, but I, right full time and I stay home with my kids. So I have a one year old and a four year old. So those are those are interesting times for, for tiny humans. They're so cute then. They don't quite four year olds talk back a little bit, but one year olds don't. Not generally. So no, she's, pretty, she's a pretty good baby. She's very calm and still, yeah. Oh yeah. they're so when they're that age. And you know my four year old a ball of energy. So we have a lot of fun. Right. Right. Well, and especially like, I know I live somewhere that's super hot. 
So I know as a kid, I went outside a lot in the heat, but my kids don't spend as much time outside. And here in Florida, it's oppressive heat. Like you will suffocate. And um, it's hard during the summer. We usually do a lot of pool, a lot of beach. And because yeah. of yeah. COVID, we're like, oh, God, <laughs> y'all y'all can't you know you're kind of over the age of like going to kick a ball back and forth you're you're, yeah. you're kind of over that so it's a challenging time for i think the tiny humans yeah i think just really any age with kids right now is just it's so unusual and different that you know there's yeah, different I, yeah and i think that we're as a mom to a mom i think we're all doing the best we can i do too i agree so keep it up you're doing great yeah yeah, All we're, we're holding it down, right? Everybody watching, moms and dads. Yeah. That was not just for moms because it's challenging for dads as well because um, everything is different. So let me see. This is one of my favorite questions because I'm nosy. Uh, what's the funniest typo you've ever written? <laughs> funniest typo? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I don't know. I do like silly ones all the time. And I sometimes I'll post them in my reader group if I think of it to do it but I don't know I'll have to think about that one okay we'll come back to that one then um do you like audiobooks and are any of your books in audio so I do have um the actually the spinoff of this series um mm -hmm. is an audio it's a duet um and it's called the power to break and the invisible thread are the two books in that series and those are my only two books I have in audio and I'm kind of trying to get more into audio but so my problem is I don't know much about audio because I have a one-year-old and a four-year-old. So I don't have the ability to really listen to romance novels, you know, like with them listening ears around all the time. And so um, I tend to read on my phone, you know, so I don't know as much about audiobooks. So I haven't gotten my books into audio as much, but I do have um, an agent who shops around some of my titles. So that's how I ended up getting two of the titles in. So those are my two. Awesome. I know awesome. I want to get more into it, and I think I will because it's. I really like the idea of it. So. Well, and it's. Uh, I know, maybe like a decade ago, it wasn't such a. I think it was popular, but not as popular as it has become in the last few years. Um, right. I have listened to audio for years and years, but. I think it's becoming more of a mainstream. Yeah. everybody's kind of dabbling in it, at least as a reader. Uh, for the most part, I I listen almost exclusively because I can listen and I homeschooled my kids before COVID. So I could, you know, school the kids and do the housework and all of those things with, here, with headphones in and listen to a book. You know, I could get my book in and the things that I had to do for the day in. Um, so I used to do I had kind of not a long commute, but kind of a like, I don't know, 20 minute commute. So I would listen sometimes in the car when I used to teach. So right. yeah. I finally I, like I got a, a car, I bought a new car in March. So my first new car in almost two decades. Uh, oh, wow. that's awesome. So the first car I've ever had that had Bluetooth and I was listening to a murder podcast on my phone. So I got in my car and it like auto connected and my loud murder podcast came through the thing. And my kids are older and they started cackling because I will actually listen to that podcast out loud. Um, my kids are like, you're listening to the murder thing again, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it could have been that last romance novel. So it's better than murder podcast, right? <laughs> I um, I'm, a, I'm a part of a couple of audiobook groups and you hear those, a lot in there like there was a lady once that shared a story i guess she was at like the drive through and she was listening to the book and then she like rolled her window down at a uh, particularly steamy part and the person opened the window and i was like yeah i would have turned feet red and probably driven away yeah i've been like I'm, i don't want the food i'm done have yeah. a nice day <laughs> We'll start over again tomorrow. <laughs> we'll again. I'm going to stop, you know, I'm going to stop at the alcohol. I'm going to stop, stop at the ABC store. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to go buy some alcohol. And we're just going to draw on this right now. Yep. Yep. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed <laughs> thinking about it. 
I had a, a friend years ago when Fifty Shades came out. She read them while we were at the gym, like walking on the treadmills. She would put it on her iPad and put it up and just read it. And I'm like, I don't know how you're reading that with all these people in the room. And she's like, it's it's just a thing. I could do it now, but at the time I was like, I don't even know. I don't. I don't know it was very intuitive at the time. Like nobody, you didn't tell people that's what you're doing. And now right. look how much has changed. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's, uh, I know I was talking with um, Erica and Maya yesterday and I said something along the same lines, like the indie community, just the book community in general, tried published or not. Um, we're, it's an interesting group because you meet people from you know 18 16 17 18 years old to 80 yeah and you know we're all reading the same things and we all have these same things to talk about yeah so it's uh it's an interesting I have, a, I have a funny story about that too so at the last school where i taught i had sophomores and one of my sophomores showed me her kindle and i saw names of people like authors i recognized on it and like i said you shouldn't be reading this book because <laughs> you're 15. Like, I know what's in that book. And I, I've I read that one. I was like, you're getting uh, ridiculously close to my name here, you know, and I didn't, I never told her what I did until I was leaving the school. And she was, I think she was a senior when I left. And so I ended up getting a signed bookmark from her favorite author at a signing I was at because we were signing together. And oh, I gave it, so nice. I told her my secret that, you know, I've been publishing books for <laughs> since 2013 and she thought that was pretty that is, cool that is yeah. so nice though um do you generally do signings i know 2020 is a weird year for it um but do you do do you do them cross country or just on the west coast yeah i do i've done um boston and i've done um california so i've gone all across the u.s mm -hmm. i did one in florida my it was my second signing ever oh um, no. here. It had to be 2015, probably. Oh, way before I lived here. I did want to say that last year, finally. So we lived, uh, we lived overseas from 2011 till 2017. Okay. So, yeah. So my first signing was 2018, I think, was the first one I ever went to. But I love them. I am 100% addicted. I was like, I will give up my book book subscription boxes if I can go to a signing a year. I'm doing um, Shameless next year. Well, I was supposed to do it this year, but I know I was supposed to go to Shameless again this year. Yeah. Yeah. But, are you um, Shameless or no? Say again. Do you, are you close to Shameless? That's in. I'm about I'm about two hours north. Okay. So yes, yeah, so I went last year and I drove down because it was close enough and it was perfect because then. Vegas, I know, G. I know that's a a friend of mine was like Vegas, right? So we, uh, her, she lives in Oklahoma now. We met in Japan, um, but she and another friend of mine met me in Vegas to do Love in Vegas. I that last year. year before last. Yeah, we did that last. Yeah, okay. and then I went to Shameless last year because they're generally back to back weekends. Yeah, yeah. And I'm too old for back to back weekends. <laughs> I know. Lisa, will you be in Philly next year? No, I have not. I'm not invited to that one. I I don't remember if I signed up to the interest form. Um, but next year I'm doing in uh, May, I'm doing Wild and Windy in Chicago. And then October is Love and Vegas and November is Shame. So those are the three for next year. And then I have one for 2022 that I've Confirmed, but I don't know if I've been announced. I don't think I've been announced for that one yet. So she's like, so I can't, I can't talk about that one yet. That's awesome. Though. I love, um, I love signings. They're so fun. I never, uh, I am, yeah, you know, from Texas originally, so I'm a talker just by nature. So talking to people in lines has never bothered me. Like, I will talk to the lady at the grocery store standing in front of me in line. Like, yeah. I have no problem. Um, so shameless for me or in Vegas as well, where they were a lot of fun because everybody in line is like, who are you here to see? Who are you going to wait for first? Like, you know, whose line are you going to go get in before it gets too long? Um, oh, that's fun. Yeah. So that was a, it was a cool. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And 
Yeah, because book people are fun. And especially if you've read the same books or you have never heard of their favorite books. Because I know I'm that way when I'm like, yeah, this book is my favorite. And someone's like, I've never even heard of it. I'm like, oh, no. What's your, what's your Amazon address? Because now I'm just going to, I have to send it to you because you you have to read it right now. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. It's a good way to meet people. It is. It is. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, you're my best friend now. So <laughs> read all the books I tell you to read. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, I'm really bad about that. I do it to my business partner. I'll read something and then I'll be like, Dawn, go read this book right now. She's like, now she's now she's timid about it. Now she's like, well, I have to ask somebody else because you keep sending me crying books. And I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so any hobbies, passions or obsessions other than reading or writing? Writing. I mean, that's. That's my big one. I've always been a writer just forever and ever. And I was always too shy to share that with anybody. And then for some reason I showed something I wrote to my husband and um, he heard a podcast about self publishing on Amazon. And so he's like, just try it. And so I did. And now seven and a half years later and 28 books here, I still do. And this is a full time thing now. So, I mean, with two little kids, it's kind of, I'm either with my kids or I'm working like that's kind of, and now my new thing is getting up at 5.15 in the morning so I can work before the kids get up. <laughs> it's like my little extra time. <laughs> so I, really writing and doing stuff with my kids and my husband. That's, awesome. We, we go for walks every night even though it's 117 out. And <laughs> you got to get out of the house, right? And yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody needs a little cool. bit of vitamin D. Yeah. <laughs> vitamin D. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> just just. <laughs> Everybody needs some sunshine because after, okay. you know, a few days cooped up in the house, everyone is like, oh, okay, we're going to start like fighting off limbs. It is in my house because I have a almost teenager who is female. So she, after a few days, is like, okay, if y'all don't stop talking to me, I'm like, oh, let's go outside. Let's put yeah. some sunscreen on because mom's pale. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, I have pale people problems. Uh, I was gonna ask something and I lost it. I love that your husband was the one that was like, you should you should try this thing. He is so supportive. And before we had kids, he read all of my books. Like he was one of my beta readers. Um, but since we've had kids, we've kind of lost the time to be able to do that. And I'm, I'm more of a like, okay, it's done. I gotta get it to my beta readers. I got, you know, and he's more of like a chapter a night kind of guy, so. He hasn't read the most recent ones, but he he read the first probably 20, 20 plus. So, yeah, he's, he's awesome and supportive. And our, our dream is for one day he could just work for Lisa Suzanne. Wouldn't that be great? And then we could just like travel and write books. And Yeah, I think that is awesome. <laughs> that's the that dream. Is, right? I think that that's fantastic. Um, I don't know. That's I... Good job, husband. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's fantastic. Um, I hear that actually quite a bit from a lot of indie authors where, you know, they're like, my husband, you know, thought that I should do this thing because it's all I do in my spare time. So yeah. um, I think it's fabulous. Uh, let's see. So what book or books would you recommend to everyone? They can be yours or your favorites or... <laughs> All of them. Right. All of mine. For sure. The start with this one. A little like destiny. Like we said earlier, just in case you're just popping in now. This one's free right now. Only for a few more days. It's the start of a series. It's the start of a series, yeah. So grab that yeah. one. And then the other one that you should definitely grab of mine is this one's also free right now. Also kind of it's kind of the start of a series, but I've never actually called it a series anywhere. Um, but it's like each book after it is a spin-off. You know, it's the okay. same band with different members. That's kind people. of a series of standalones. Yes. Like you, I mean, you'll know what happens in the previous books if you start in the middle, but, you know, maybe the one in the middle is where you first found it, and that's fine too. So, so I would definitely I'm recommend that person. You find it in the middle. I'm usually the person that reads, um, especially if someone like you who has a big repertoire, like has a big backlist. I will find a book and then read like four of them and then realize there was books before it and then go back and and read those. That's 
that's how, uh, when I first read Megan March, I started with like, it was like four series in and they're oh. all kind of inter interconnected at some point, kind of like in little bitty ways. And I found, yeah, I found her most, it was just her most recent at the time. I'd never heard of her and I downloaded the audiobook and I was like, oh, I love this. And, and now you and know them, right? right? Yeah. So that I think you're it's also a kind of reader. Like you read one and then you're like, oh, I love this. I gotta read them all. <laughs> I'm, I am a binger on all the things. So if I find an author um, that I like, if I read one, I'm like, okay, let's go find everything else this person has ever written. Um, and then I'm like, okay, you know, I'll binge all of them. And then I get mad at myself because then I'm out and I'm like, okay, so <clears throat> when are you, uh, huh? when, are, when are you done? Are you, are you, are you going to be done soon? <laughs> like when's the next one? Yeah. I am very, very bad at that. I read uh, a five book series that I thought it was a complete series when I found it. It is not, it is a eight book series. Oh. <sighs> so I got that to the end of book five and I was like, oh, okay, where is six? Not out yet? Nope. <laughs> I was no. like, no. <laughs> hey, Kara. Um, hopefully I said it was, hopefully I said it right. It's either Kara or Kara, but. That one, that one's tricky. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do you normally read? Uh, romance is my preferred. Um, I mean, honestly, normally I'm reading my own stuff because I'm editing and <laughs> I'm, you know, I release about, about four books a year. Um, so I feel like I'm always reading those um, or kids books because I have a one-year-old and four-year-old um but if if I had my perfect world where I'd get to read whatever I want I like um forbidden romance I like cheating books um Ooh. some of my favorites are Jessica Hawkins I love her um I read um it, it wasn't cheating but it was a little darker um a Maria Lewis book it was the uh, sworn and defied <gasps> yeah um Way kind of back when I first started publishing, I found Night Owl by M. Pierce. And I always recommend that book because it's like, it's pretty dirty, but it's it's a good one. I really liked that one. Um, so just off the top of my head, those are a few. I like, I like the, I don't know, the angsty stuff. And I write angsty too, for the most part. I like a good, I like a good heart gripper. Yeah. That's, that's one of those. I'm glad that you said they were angsty. That means I'll have to like, plan your books out have yeah. to have to be in the right mood i have learned my rom -com still have angst in them like i can't get away from it it's just it's just what i do <laughs> i think it's one of those those romance things though right because they're supposed to be yeah, there's supposed to be a part where you're like they're not able to be together and right like right. even rom-coms can't be funny all the time there's you know there's parts of it no. where but I love a good laugh out loud book. You know, one one that's like, oh, my bad. I uh, the first rom com I ever read was Pucked by Helena Hunting, and I actually woke my husband up because I'm a, so I'm a night reader. I have insomnia. I've had insomnia most of my life, so I will lay in bed and read till five or six o'clock in the morning, and then just go on about my day. Um, and I read. I was reading. Pucked. I had picked it up for free. I had never heard of it. Um, and I woke my husband up and he was like, can you please stop laughing? And I was like, no, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> no, I can't. I was, so, I was like, I can get up. And he was like, no, just stop laughing. And years later I got him to read it because he got tired of my, um, of my beaver references. And he was like, I don't get it. And I was like, okay, you have to read the book. And, and he read it and he was like, that is really funny. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those that you're like, oh my goodness. And anytime I uh, get into like a book funk, it's a book I go back to because it's familiar and I'm a rereader because yeah, books bring out emotion. So, you know, like if I'm having a bad day, I can read a book that made me happy and it's almost like, like a comfort thing. Yeah. I get that. I know a lot of yeah. I know a lot of people don't reread. Um, I do because I'm like, but 
but I love them. Like, bring them back. I'm like that with songs too, like, you know, like music. Yeah. And if, if there's, if I'm having a bad day, sometimes just hearing the right song will turn it around, you know? Oh, hundred percent. Because I think it's attached to, it's either attached to a feeling or a memory, yeah. um, you know, and it's, I think it's that, that beautiful thing that art does that can change like how you feel about something and books are art, just like songs and movies and all of those other creative things that the rest of us don't get to produce. <laughs> I'm good with that. Um, I love reading the books. So if I started writing the books, then I wouldn't read as many books and I wouldn't yeah. be happy. See, and there has to be both. There has to be people who love reading and has, has to be people who love writing. And I think that, um, I know I said this to Erica and Mia yesterday, I think that you guys are brilliant and that, oh. Like, you know, all the things just work out and I don't get it. Uh, well, you already told me what you think a successful book looks like. Um, so what would you like readers to know most about your books? I don't know, that, that you have to read them. <laughs> I Probably the, um, I, you know, I have another shirt that says uh, cliffhangers, love triangles, rock stars, Lisa Suzanne. So. That's kind of, yeah, and I think too that even if it's not marked a rom-com, like there's still gonna be humor in it because that's just who I am. You know, I, I like to laugh and I know mm -hmm. everybody does, right? So, um, so there's gonna be some humor and some witty banter and stuff like that. And um, I think I have something for everyone. And my other thing, my, my current logo um, says HEA guaranteed. And so I, even if I put them through a lot to get there, eventually they'll, you'll you'll get a happy ending. Awesome. That's what I'm right. enough. Yeah, that's I think that that's perfect. Um, so Kara said, "Do you have music on when you write? I heard it can help, but I get too distracted when I try it." Do you know what's funny? So probably my first. So I've published 28 books now. My first 25, I think, I listened to music nonstop. Like I would have a playlist for every book and I would just listen to that playlist while I wrote. Sometimes I would pick a song and it would just be on repeat while I was writing. And then something, I don't know if it was having another baby or what, but something changed and same, like the music started distracting me and I couldn't write with music on anymore. I don't know why. So now what I do is I listen to Brain FM and it's, um, an app, or you could do it on a website. It's just brain.fm, and it's, um, I forget what they're called, binaural waves or something like that. So it's just like sounds that your brain is supposed to respond to and make you work more efficiently and more effectively. And so I listen to that now instead of songs because there's no lyrics to it. And I think the lyrics are what tends to distract me. And so I'll listen to that, and it really does help me work more efficiently. It's, I don't know. I don't know if it works for everybody, but it works for me. So it's like, I don't know if it actually works, but it is working. So <laughs> works for me. <laughs> so um, that's interesting. Also think about um, maybe classical music that doesn't have any lyrics as well. Um, there's a really cool uh, uh, nerd alert. <laughs> there's a really cool, it's a quartet and they play popular music without obviously without lyrics. So called a vitamin string quartet and they have things oh. from like Queen to Lady Gaga. It's that's near. cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're fabulous. I, I like, like that. Like on Spotify there was different and it wasn't a quartet. It was just instrumental, like current pop right. hits and stuff. And that was kind of nice to listen to too. But then then I find myself like, wait, what song is this? And I start singing it in my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> wait, I know that's, that's my problem. That's that's my issue. Um is I'm like Oh wait, that's Bohemian Rhapsody, and then I'm singing Bohemian Rhapsody with you know without any problems because you know that's one of those I know all the words to. <laughs> uh, that makes that made me think of uh, that movie. I can't remember the name of the movie though. Um, there you go. That was not what I was thinking, but that is the movie I was thinking about. Uh, so, do you like to hear from your readers? This is definitely a personal question. <laughs> do I like to hear from my readers? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I love talking to my readers and really like my favorite place on the internet is my reader group because it's a place where I get to talk to people. I mean, people who are there because they want to talk to me or talk about my books, you know? 
And so I just love going in there and talking to them. I love when I get emails or messages. Um, you know, like if I send out arcs to my arc team, I'm always like pins and needles, like, oh, what do they think? So sometimes they'll send me little messages and I just love it. I love hearing from readers. Awesome. Hey, Kay, if you read Lisa's book, you can message her and be like, I loved it. Um, yep. that, I say that's a personal question because I am, I'm big on being like, oh my God, what did you just do to me? <laughs> One of my favorite authors. Like, sorry, but I'm like, sorry. Not sorry. really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my favorite authors, that's what I do to her. Uh, we're friends in real life. Um, and I knew her before she started publishing, but I'll actually send her a text message. And I'm like, why do I continue to let you do this to me? <laughs> it's been almost a decade and I'm still like, yes, next book. And then I'm like, why? Oh, it's like watching a horror movie and then being like, oh, wait, I didn't think I wanted to be scared. Yeah. I wasn't know? expecting that. <laughs> That's girl. That's me. I'm like, okay, you knew better. All right. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to say? I don't think so. Just, oh, I didn't really talk about my new release, did I? Oh. Yeah, I don't think so. No, I like about about the cover. So, um, this is a, I don't know what's the best way to put it on. Okay. <laughs> this is a, a rock star romance and um, it, it's a, it works as a standalone uh, and it's kind of a spinoff of a different book where one of the members left the band. And so the replacement war is about um, the competition for replacing that member of the band. But it starts off where we have uh, this bad boy from Vegas who um, is in a Motley Crue cover band and he, you know, right? And I, so I kind of listened to Motley Crue while I was writing. Like, okay. Well, not one thing, because you just talked about that, but like, you know. Off, you in know. the interim, right. Yeah, that's the word. Um, so he's in this Motley Crue cover band and he gets invited to audition to fill this spot. And then uh, our lead character, our lead lady um, is Lexi and she's from Nashville and she's actually in a country band. So she's like this Nashville sweetheart. And then we have this bad boy from Vegas. Um, and they're going on a reality show because the band has been on different reality shows, which if you remember, I started with this and he was on a reality show. Um, so they, they ended up producing their own reality show. And um, so they're doing a special season where they're calling it the replacement war. And it's, it's, bat it's 10 different people who are battling for this spot in their band. And so uh, they, Gage and Lexi meet at the hotel uh, before the competition begins. They're not allowed to talk about why they're there because they both signed contracts that said they couldn't. And then um, when they get to the house and they see each other, they're like, wait a minute. And so that's when sparks fly and fireworks explode. And it's, I think it's pretty fun. And readers seem to be really enjoying it. I've gotten, um, I think this is probably my highest rating reviewed book. Um, awesome. People are loving it and I'm getting lots of amazing messages and, um, it is a rom-com. There are funny parts to it, but like I said, I'm still going to have the angst in there because that's just my stuff. So, um, pick that one up. and it's all my books too are free on Kindle Unlimited. So, um, if you subscribe to Kindle Unlimited, you can grab those. Free. Awesome. Um, so Karen said, do you have any life experience about band life, family, friends, etc.?" Um, good question, Karen. So, uh, when I was in high school, my brother was in a band and, um, he played the drums and he ended up leaving that band. But one of the guys in that band ended up uh, moving to California and he was like designing drum heads or guitars. I think it was guitars. Mm. He was designing for like really famous bands. And he ended up getting in with Seether and he actually played with Seether for a couple of years. I don't think he does anymore. But they came through town on a tour and he invited us to. Um, basically get the VIP package and we were kind of backstage and we got to go tour their tour bus and their tour bus was parked right next to Buck Cherry's tour bus. And they're all sitting out there in these um, camper chairs, like drinking after the show. And I mean, it was, that was like my, where I base all, all of this stuff that happens was like just one night that, that I went, but just apart from that, I just have been to tons and tons of concerts more before I had kids and obviously more before COVID um and it's music has just always been like a big part of my life and something i really enjoy and so it just kind of made sense to 
write about rock stars. And I mean, I've done a lot of research over the years just to make sure that I'm kind of, you know, on the right track. And this is really how life is for them. <laughs> um, but it, cool. it was kind of cool, especially too, to have um, this Brian is the guy's name, kind of a contact that uh, I could kind of talk to you, you know, about some of the stuff if I needed to. So. Yeah, kind of your expert. So she said, inspiration for Ethan, question mark? Was, um, <laughs> Ethan's the one in uh, The Power to Break, that the one that's on audio that she's asking about. So um, I don't know who inspired that character. I don't know. I just had, so I started writing, he, Ethan originated in A Little Like Destiny, which is okay. free. Mention that again. Um, so he originated there, and he's the drummer of the band Vale. And he, um, I started writing about that band probably when I was in college. So we're talking like, wow. I graduated college in 2002, um, and I had this huge series written, and it was 300,000 words. And, um, but it was from 2002. You know, I mean, over the years, I would add to it all the time. Right. And, it was like 2009 and I was still adding to it blah 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 so in when I first started publishing my husband said um you know when he like encouraged me to do it I picked a different book because I felt like this one was like my special project you know it's like I wasn't ready to share it yet it was your baby that you weren't ready to share yeah I mean yeah uh, especially on like kind of an experiment that I wasn't sure if this was going to work out or not and so this ended up being the 14th book I published and I actually started rewriting it completely from scratch um but kind of kept the same character so Ethan the character has been around since probably 2002 um and then developed over the years so it's hard to think back and remember exactly who he would be based on but he was just always supposed to be like this bad boy rocker you know and same with Mark is our main character in here Mark Ashton um is the like the bad boy and together they were like this unstoppable force and they were just always so you know with all the ladies and all the bad things they were supposed to not be into and they were and and so I don't know I don't know where he came from they were like Bonnie and Clyde without the Bonnie <laughs> um, what is the highest number of books you have worked on at one time? Hmm. So, <laughs> that's a good question. I can only <laughs> write on one thing at a time. So, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll start something, and if it's not really like speaking to me, or I have a deadline for something else, I'll set it to the side and then come back to it later. And that actually happened with this is kind of funny. So, this book was originally called Not Just Another Rock Star Romance. And it was a spinoff of my rom-com, Not Just Another Romance novel. And so, which is the girl dates all the different types of book boyfriends to see who will lead her to her happy ending. And so I published that in 2015 and I started writing this book in 2015. Um, and then I was, I wanted to write a cheating book. And so I published a standalone called Conflicted. And then I published, um, a little three book standalone series, clickbait, stalemate, and outweigh. Then I published this trilogy, A Little Like Destiny, and the other two in that. Then I published uh, four more books until before I got back to this one. And so let, it would, I started this in 2015 and didn't end up publishing it until 2018, December of 2018. And so Really, I only, to answer the question, sort of, I only work on one book at a time, but I will set things aside if I need to and then come back to them later sometimes. So um, I know Kristen and I have actually talked about, because she's one of my readers that messages me, and I love that. Um, but we've talked about, she kind of guessed on a story that I was working on that I started. And it um, at the time, I was pregnant, and it was getting so, like, dark and I was like I can't write this right now because I'm too emotional as it is you know when you're pregnant right. and you have all crazy hormones and stuff yeah. and so um I ended up setting that one aside and so I don't know if Kristen's asking if that's the one I'm working on now but it's not I haven't gone back to that one yet but I'm working on two other ones now and I had to set one aside because I started writing another one so but then also um, I'll get invited to different anthologies and things like that or need a short story for different reasons. And so sometimes I'll kind of interrupt what I'm working on to work on a short story or something like that. But usually only one at a time. Makes sense. 
I'm excited yeah. for the dark romance. I like a good dark romance. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'm like you. Too. I like I like a good cliffhanger. I like a good cheating book. Like there's nothing really that I'm like, ah, I want to. This is the that. one for you. You have to read this one. If you oh, like that's, I'm I've already got it. I'm getting I'm I've already got it on my little list. It's happening as soon as I'm done here. Yeah, uh, you have to tell me what you think. Oh, <laughs> We're gonna start with that. You'll never get rid of me. Um, ask Monique next time you talk to Monique. That's how I found Monique in a takeover. Um, bye, Kara. Um, Hi, thanks for coming by. And uh, I found her in a group, a takeover. Got her first book, and now I alpha read for her. She just she never got rid of me. <laughs> Love that though. That's crazy. She, yeah, she never got rid of me. Um, so Kristen said. I was thinking about the Anthonology project. Actually, you just posted about it recently. Yeah. Yes, I'm part, I can't talk about it yet because it hasn't been announced, but it's coming in October and there's 11 authors in it. And, and you're writing for it. It's a rock star. My contribution. That's all. And it's, oh, it's a prequel to something else. Okay. So you, you, if you read me, you may have. Yeah, so now I have to read them because uh, now I am intrigued. All right, everyone. Um, the link for the Do Not Disturb book group or book clubs speed dating with a book that was a mouthful is hey, um, is in the description of this video. Please um, go check it out and check out the rest of. Lisa Suzanne's books on Amazon. She said they are all in Kindle Unlimited. Um, and she has two free right now. So those two are free right now. Yeah, so go check them out. Um, thank you, Lisa. You are welcome back anytime. Oh, thank you. I really you just let me know. It was very fun. Um, tomorrow, Don will be back with uh, Jamie Albright at noon Eastern Standard Time. I looked it up before we started, so I did not forget. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in and thank you for being here, Lisa. Thank Have a good you. day. See you. Bye.